Hello, let's learn how to uh, do some soldering with Steve. I'm Steve, by the way. First of all, you're going to need a soldering iron. I recommend a 30 watt iron. I think that is the perfect temperature, in my opinion, or 25 watt. You're also going to need a uh, iron holder with a sponge. The sponge is very important so you can wipe off your tip. And of course you'll need some solder. I will link a description for these items in the description thing below. Some flux is not a bad idea, although it's not crucial that you have it. There's flux within the solder, so but you know it doesn't hurt to have some flux. This helps with the flow of the solder. You know it keeps it flowing. First we're going to tin our, our tip. And one thing I learned when I was a bench tech in a factory one of the people on the assembly line, they taught me, uh, you know, wrap a bunch of solder when you're tinning your tip. Not all the time, but when you when you have a brand new tip and you're tinning it, wrap a bunch of solder um, before you plug it in on the tip. And then, you know, you have a little clump of solder there just to prep it when, when it does get hot. You can dip it in the fluxes as much as you want. That doesn't hurt. So you just put a clump on the on the end and plug it in as soon as it's hot and this is you know initially when you when you have a brand new tip you don't have to do this all the time when you turn it on hit it with some solder and and clean it off with the sponge and you can also dip it in the flux as well it should be nice and shiny and and just have a taste of solder on the tip you want a nice pointy shiny tip that's uh, ideal like that so first of all we'll solder some headers on a arduino nano because a lot of times they come without the headers soldered on i like to put it in a um, breadboard so that i know the pins will line up and it'll be easy to put in the breadboard and it just sort of holds everything in place if you can get it on you notice that i i do hit the uh, solder on the iron just to get it going ultimately what you're doing is you want to you want to heat up the the pad and the pin so you can hit the solder on the iron to get the heat going because that'll sort of heat everything up but then you want to hit the solder on the on the pin and the pad basically you want a smooth shiny surface it's all about hitting the thing and and pulling away the heat at the correct moment it's just a matter of practice and you leave a nice shiny mound of solder there and you get a really good electrical connection which is what you want and you know it just takes a little practice you know you don't want to practice on an arduino because you don't want to mess up your arduino but you could solder some pins to a pc board or something there you go that's a, a header on your arduino Next, we'll tin some, some wires. Sometimes it's good to tin them. You don't always have to tin wires, but like if you're going to put them in a screw connector, it just makes things a little better, keeps all the strands together, and, you know, it's just nice if you're shoving this into a little connector and screwing it down. I think it just it makes it a little more reliable and um, might last a little longer. soldering a wire to a terminal you want a good mechanical connection you want both a good mechanical connection and a good solder joint so what you do is you make a little loop stick the wire through the hole and sort of bend it back up so that way you have a good mechanical connection and it's not going to come loose and then you're going to solder on top of that i do hit the, the iron with the solder just to heat the whole thing up but then I put the solder on the wire and the terminal, and then I pull it away. And you don't want to move it, because if you move it, you'll end up with a cold joint. Once it solidifies, you want to not move it so it, it remains shiny and it's a good connection. Next, I'll show you how to solder two wires together. So you strip them so they're kind of long, like that. You want to put your heat shrink tubing on first, and then you, you cross them like this and twist them together. If you have some sort of holder, this is actually an alligator clip holding it, you can always, you know, put something on top of it and you can figure out ways to hold it. And then you want to hit this with the solder, touching the iron to get it going, but then I'm adding the, the solder to the wire itself. And that's a nice, good connection there. Nice and shiny. You don't move it, you know, while it's solidifying. And then slip your uh, heat shrink tubing over it. You can also use electrical tape. Heat shrink tubing's a little cleaner.
Yeah, that's how you put two wires together. But you don't, you really don't want that exposed, that bare metal. You want to cover it with either heat shrink tubing or uh, electrical tape. You don't want it to touch anything else and short something out. Then adding components to a printed circuit board, usually I put, you know, I put the components through and then sort of bend them over to hold the part in. You basically just uh, solder the pad and the, um, the wire that's poking through. You know, you just want a nice shiny little mound of solder there. And then uh, you come in with clippers and just cut those off. And that's the basics of soldering, really. You know, there are other things you can get, too. You can get solder wick for removing solder. Uh, you might look into that. A solder sucker is for removing solder from these holes where the pads are in a circuit board. It's a good thing to have. But basically, you know, it's just a lot of practice and, you know, the right temperature and a nice clean tip is good there you go you can make your you can be a maker builder and uh, make all kinds of cool stuff so stay tuned for more tutorials on my channel